Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Cheap Sense here. And, damn, my collar messed up. Oh, well, anyway. Um, just a relaxing day today. All I did was lay around, um, watch TV, sleep, um, wake up, go back to sleep, watch some old TV, stuff like that. So, anyway, as you can see, uh, you can't see his face. But that's actually TVs right here. Ashton from Gent Sense. I actually, for the past few hours, have been just sitting and watching um, on YouTube uh, fragrance reviews and, you know, getting information about different fragrances and stuff like that. So that's pretty much what I do. Um, if you all think that um, I'm one of those people who takes the fragrance game a little light. I kind of do, but I do watch reviews and I do um, keep up with current fragrances and the older fragrances and I try to stay in the know-how or the um, what have you of what's going on in the fragrance community. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, <clears throat> that video that Ashton is doing right here is talking about office for men and i don't know how many of you saw that video but um it is what it is so to recap yesterday for those of you who had the opportunity to um actually join the live where uh, matt from georgia gent and i were on our road trip and we were going to jacksonville florida uh, we made a few pit stops along the way and you all saw the stores that we went into and the kind of fragrances that are out there, the stores that had something and the stores that didn't. For the most part, Marshalls, TJ Maxx um, were the two better choices when it comes to fragrance uh, shopping if you were going to a rack store. Ross usually has the same stuff. It's always the same Michael Jordan um, the uh, Beverly Hills Polo Club. There's an abundance of that stuff. Um, I wish they would do away with most of it. Um, some of it, I don't care whether it stays or not. Um, but for the most part, I'm not big on a lot of that stuff. So uh, I never have been. Um, but a lot of stuff that a lot of us, I guess, fragrance people have been in the game for a little while. And we've like moved up or graduated from that that type of stuff. Not, not saying that there's anything wrong with it because I had it before also. Um, and for the newbies coming in, um, it's going to be an experience for them also. Um, yes, I would advise not to buy a lot of that stuff when you first jump into the fragrance game. Um, so it can be... Um, how can I say it? It can be... I don't want to say overwhelming, but just to to jump out the gate and buy a lot of that more expensive stuff and have it in your collection, if you're not going to appreciate it for what it is um, continuously, then I don't advise jumping in there, jumping out there and getting a lot of that stuff. A lot of it is good. Yes, I will say that, but I'm not going to sit here and say, um, go for any little thing you may see out there, don't do it. Um, you'll end up having a bunch of stuff in your collection that you're really not even wearing. You're really not picking up that much. Um, you really don't care for it and you'll end up having to get rid of it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say you can't get rid of it like somebody did me once because I honestly did get rid of mine. Depending on the way that I got rid of it, it didn't matter, but I, I ended up getting, a, getting rid of a lot of my stuff. So anyway, um, I enjoyed yesterday a lot, as you all saw, um, my first time um, at one of the stores um, was a very, I don't want to say humbling, but it was a very almost intimidating Tom Ford and Creed being around fragrances that cost that much money. Um, I know I'll never be able to afford a bottle of that 
uh, unless I save up for it, in which that's something I'm just not, like, I'm not very good at saving up money. So that's out of the question for me. Um, maybe some samples of decants, but uh, maybe one day, who knows? Anyway, I enjoyed the trip. I enjoyed the uh, experience. Um, we did kind of strike out when we were going to do comparisons between um, Versace Arrows Flame and uh, Kalan by Parfums de Marley. I think we got like one person that did the video. We had a second one and it was in Dillard's department store. Uh, one of the young ladies behind the counter was going to do the video until I pulled the phone out to record and she darted out. And I wish I would have got that whole film, but um, we tried walking the strip at the St. John's Town Center and people just weren't receptive to it, in which I told Matt I understood. Um, people are out there trying to relax. They're on their phones. They're, you know, with their families and nobody really wants to be bothered by people walking around and you know, shoving cameras and microphones in their faces and stuff like that, even though it's only going to take like maybe a minute or two, but it is what it is. And so anyway, I enjoyed the trip, the whole experience. Um, look forward to doing it again. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see that a lot of you all stuck around for as long as you did for the live stream. I know it was a little long and I know you were anxious to see what we were going to find. Um, ended up being, I think, a little over two hours and something, but it is what it is. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, Ava, I don't know if you're going to see this video, Ava Monroe, but I did see your uh, video just a while ago on uh, the Oud experience. And I don't know if you were <laughs> speaking specifically to me because I am the one who said I had a bad experience with Oud. Um, I didn't like the one I wore. And maybe if it's not the more dominant note in a fragrance, I would like it more. Excuse me. But for the most part, the one I had was a little bit too strong for me. And I did not like it at all. Um, so if I can find some of the ones that you mentioned uh, that were a little better on the Oud, I'll try it out. Uh, but this is actually a list of 10 fragrances I have in my collection that are, for lack of a better word, sweet. Um, some of them are super sweet. Some of them are just sweet. But these are, for the third time, the sweet fragrances in my collection. Uh, or fourth time. I tried to pick out the sweetest of the sweet without going gourmandish with it um, I do have some gourmand type fragrances but for the most part these are just the sweet ones that you spray and you just think oh my god that's sweet so this is no particular order I'm just going to throw it out there it is what it is and at the number 10 spot is Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct and this is a nice fragrance. I don't have the full size bottle. This actually, I believe, came from either this one or the other one. I think it was this one from Scent Nation. He found this at his store in Washington, came with the big bottle, and this was inside of it. And he was gracious enough to send this to me to sample. So thank you again, Scent Nation. I know it's been a while ago since you sent this, but yeah, I still have it. Um, this is a sweet fragrance. And I, I have to take a shower anyway, so it don't really matter. It's one of those sweet fragrances. Um, very popular when it first came out. I don't see a lot of people talking about this one in particular like they used to. I like it. It's nice, though. I don't wear it much um, because I have so many other fragrances. And I'm pretty sure you can see the top one two three tiers on my shelf i have one more tier at the bottom full to capacity of fragrances plus what's on my dresser that you can't see um and plus i have some on my under my nightstand that you know oils and stuff like that so i have a lot to go through but this is nice this is very nice i like it um i will start giving it some wearings 
um, maybe when it cools off a little bit more because these this is a little bit too cloying for the summertime a lot of these are you can pull it off if you do maybe a, a spray or two and you're inside like an office building or the workplace that's climate controlled but outside in the heat i don't think these will work good for you so this is a uh, abercrombie and fitch first instinct My number nine is one that a few people talked about. I didn't see a lot of big name reviewers talk about this one. Just a few. I'm still sniffing that first instinct. It smells good. A lot of, um, I'll say, mid-tier reviewers talked about this one. Maybe a few um, that are just above me. Uh, but for the most part, this is sculpture owned. The one that kind of looks like a wind sail. I mean, it really makes no sense to me how, what this bottle looks like. It looks like a wind sail almost, but then it has a damn flying lion on the front of it. Or, you know, a tiger or a panther or whatever the hell that is on the front of it. So it makes no sense, but I kind of get it. Sculpture, you know, whatever. So... I got talked into this one by some other reviewers and um, not them telling me directly, but just by them speaking about the fragrance. And I was interested and I did order this one, I think from fragrance X or fragrance net. And it finally came in and not expensive. I think I paid maybe 15, 20 bucks for it. If that, um, I like it. Little bit, like I said, too cloying for the winter time. I mean, uh, summertime, maybe more for spring if it's a little bit cool outside. Perfect for fall and winter. Um, it's not as sweet as First Instinct, but it's more of like a syrupy type sweet, like heavy. I like it, and um, if you don't have it, at least try and check it out. I'm not going to tell anyone to go out and buy any of these fragrances. That's your choice. Um, but if you can get somebody to give you a decant or know somebody who has it and will let you at least smell it or sample it, see what you think, and then go from there. Pretty inexpensive fragrance. I doubt you'll see this one in particular at a rack store. Uh, but if you get lucky enough to find it for a decent price at a rack store, then I would say grab it, yeah. Sculpture own. This one I'm really not too fond of. I actually did a trade with somebody. And I think I traded away my Halloween Man for it, if I'm not mistaken. And I love Halloween Man Shot. I should say Halloween Man Shot. I should have kept it. Um, I actually was interested in this particular fragrance, but I had... Club de Nuit Intense Man first because I wanted to get it before it sold out back when the hype was real. But this is Club de Nuit Man. I'm not a fan of this one, to be honest with you. Um, I know I think Scent Nation finally got this one in and I actually had this one months and months ago. I just never talk about it. I may have worn it once and, and mentioned it in a, in a review but this is not one of my favorites. It kind of reminds me personally of One Million. It kind of has the same vibe. Um, it may be slightly different, but it's just not... It's not my thing. It does kind of remind me of One Million. I'll be honest with you about that. Um, but for somebody who is starting out their collection and you wanted to not spend $45 or $50 for $1 million, next best option. I think this runs around $20 something to $35, something like that. It does give me a $1 million vibe. So uh, this is Club de Nuit Intense. I mean, a Club de Nuit Man, I should say, not Intense Man. Uh, at the number seven spot, I'll go with this one. Halloween Man. This is a pretty good fragrance. It's not, to me, as good as Halloween Man shot. 
Man Shot has more of a masculine vibe to it. It has a little bit of spice to it. Um, a little manliness. This one is juvenile to me. Which, juvenile is not bad, but I just personally, I don't even reach for this that much. I've worn this once to work. I don't think I got any compliments. And to me, this one also gives me the one million vibe. I don't know. It's just me. I don't, I'm not a really a big fan of Halloween, man. Um, it's a nice fragrance. It's decent. But I like Halloween Man Shot better. So. That's the number seven spot. Number six. Is one I always wanted to get my hands on. And I actually got to smell it. Before the Perfume World shop closed in our local mall. And I wasn't really impressed by it. Because this one. Also. has a familiar vibe to it kind of reminds me of Invictus low key Invictus this is from the house of it's, it's slightly different I give it that Yeah, it's a little different than Invictus, but it still gives me kind of that same vibe with the sweetness. It's Armoff's El Celio. Has a decent atomizer. Top clicks into place, which is a good thing. Good atomizer. It smells good. I like it. Um, price point, I'm not sure on because online and in-store are two different things, but... I like this one. I mean, if you're into sweet fragrances, this is another sweet one. Um, it does have that similar type sweetness as Invictus, but it's not the same. But it's nice. Um, most of these, I can't give you the projection or uh, performance on because a lot of these I haven't worn yet. I don't think I've worn this one in particular yet. But the Halloween man, I think I got maybe hour and a half projection, about five hours of longevity. The Club de Nuit man was about the same, about an hour and a half to five, five and a half hours longevity. Sculpture was probably like an hour projection. Um, longevity probably like five hours I haven't worn I don't believe the first instinct yet um, and El Celio I haven't worn yet so that's at the number six spot the number five spot is the reason why I actually got rid of one million lucky um, they're not the same but they gave off the similar vibe to my nose and I should have kept 1 million lucky and which I'm pretty sure I'll find it again but this is Azaro's Wanted and I like this one I actually like it more than Lucky uh, because this one on my skin performed a little bit better than Lucky did this one I got like an hour and a half projection I got about 5 hours of longevity out of it and that's about average for me on most of these colognes um, it could just be my skin um, i do moisturize i drink plenty of water um, that's just the average that i get up to five five and a half hours um, some i may get a little bit longer but for the most part some of these i just get about five five and a half hours out of but this azaro wanted is not bad i like it a lot uh cap Clicks in the place. Atomizer. Not bad. Oh, man. That smells so good. Um, next up is one I've been talking about. And I thought the other, at least two of these smelled similar to it. This is the infamous 1 million. And this one actually was gifted to me by a subscriber. And there's not much left. It's like a quarter bottle left. 
So I may end up trying to find another one of these later on, if possible. But for the most part, I wasn't a big fan of this one at first. And I think what was happening was I was falling for the hype. And people were just saying it's bubble gummy, it's this and that. And I was like, I don't think I want to deal with that. But you have to experience some things for yourself. And I'm glad I did because I actually like this. I didn't get any compliments when I wore this one the one or two times I did wear it. But it's still not a bad fragrance. That's one million. At the number three spot is one I really love. And a lot of people ask me about the house of Jacques Bogart. And I only really know about three of their fragrances. Um, one of them was um, Silver Scent Deep. And the other one was gifted to me or in a trade with me. I think it was uh, the Ruby Edition. And this one, which is my favorite, this is Silver Scent Pure. And it almost has like a great kind of vibe to it. Oh, I love this one so much, man. I haven't worn it much, maybe twice since I've had it. Um, very inexpensive. I think it runs you about 15 bucks. You might be able to find it for 12. I'm not sure. It smells great. Performance on this one is not bad. I think I get like an hour and a half projection and about the average, about five hours of longevity out of it, which to, on me, to me is not bad because I always take my fragrances with me anyway. Uh, so that's Jacques Bogart Silver Scent Pure. Ashton is still talking back there. Um, at the number two spot, <laughs> I don't really consider this to be a gentleman fragrance, but it says gentleman only. It's from the house of Givenchy, and this is gentleman only. And this thing is sweet. I like it, though. It's nice. It's very nice. I think the dry down is a little bit better to smell than the opening uh, because it is super sweet but it is nice i think when i wore that one to work i did get compliments and once again it's about average i got about an hour hour and a half projection out of it i got about five hours of longevity out of it that's pretty much pushing it for me um but that's at the number two spot and number one of course, this one had to be in the collection because, or in the uh, list because it is the one fragrance besides one million that people talked about being super sweet, bubblegummy, juvenile, and all of that. It is Invictus. And this is the big boy. Um, this one actually came from a subscriber. I don't remember if this was gifted to me or it came in a trade. I can't remember. So much stuff goes on in my life that I don't even keep track of most of the time. But I appreciate it nonetheless for having it. Um, this is the one that is the epitome of bubble gummy. Me and, um, or Matt and I, I should say, were at TJ Maxx yesterday in the live stream. And we actually pulled this one out of the box and he sprayed it one spray. And the area we were standing in, this filled up that whole area where we were standing. And that's all I could smell for at least five minutes of standing around. Even though we had the other two, we had the vanilla outlaw and he had his pineapple intense or of uh, whatever pineapple fragrance it was, he was spraying. This is all I was smelling. So, but I actually like it. Uh, it's a shame that I can't wear it as much as I want to because I have a coworker, as I always say, that wears this and um, Invictus Intense, which puts me at a disadvantage because I definitely don't want to go to work smelling like anybody else. That's why I never wear the same fragrance more than once to work. 
Um, so for the most part, at my number one spot, Invictus, this one actually gets at least two hours to two and a half hours of projection. Um, you're going to get at least six, seven hours of longevity out of this one, depending on your sprays. may take you longer. This is a projection monster. It projects better than anyone, anything else on this list that I have. Um, and sniffing this, it's almost the same kind of vibe as this, but this gives you more of a great Kool-Aid, like the powder from the Kool-Aid pack. It gives you that kind of vibe when you smell this. That's why I love this. So that is my personal top 10 list of sweet fragrances. Um, hate it or love it. It is what it is. Um, if you want to leave down below what are your favorite sweet fragrances or what do you have in, in your collection that's sweet, leave it down below. Make sure you hit the like button or the dislike button. I don't really give two shits which one you push. Just push one. Um, make sure you leave a comment. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Please let people know about the channel, not just mine, but all the other guys in the fragrance community also. Um, make sure you ring the bell for notifications. When that icon pops up, make sure you hit all so you get all notifications. And hey, what more can I say? Here is to smelling good. This is your boy, Mr. Cheap Sense. Thank you all for the love and support. Peace.